The 95 watt PoE also named IEEE AO2 dot BT delivered around three times power budget over legacy PoE. It makes things become more possible. However, both PoE switch and the IP device should support IEEE AO2 dot three BT in order to work with full power. Otherwise, the power system only will work in 30 watt. We don't have 95 watts in the system. According to this standard, there's chip deployed on both PSD and the PD, which will negate the power transporting. If the PSD, such like this one PoE injector, detect the front end IP device is legacy PoE, it will set power limit to 30 watts. We got several IEEE AO2.3 PD IP device here. Uh, this is the PoE injector. We found three indicator to display how much power taken by front end device. And there's two indicators showing how many twist pairs are being used to send the power. If both sides support IEEE AO2.3 BD standard, all four twist pairs will be taken to transport the power. We got the 95 watt PoE speaker, which will separate the high power from the data. And usually it's used in the front end with the camera or other IP device. We also have the PoE standard, which can extend the 100 meter this PoE distance. Each port can output 30 watts while it works with this PoE injector. These two are PoE power switch. It's quite convenient to expand your PoE network without adding a new cable in the field. Imagine your customer just want you to add extra camera one year after you install the system. Adding a new camera could cost not only the money but also the time. Using this PoE power switch will provide you extra port without running the new cable. The last one is the outdoor PoE switch. While the power source is not available outdoor, we can use this PoE switch. All right. Now let's just make a quick test with the PoE pass-through switch, this one. First three, we are going to connect the PoE injector to this PoE pass-through switch using this 100 internet cable. Right, now let's connect the port number A. This is the last port, the number A, which can take the power from the PoE injector. Next, we connect the PoE injector to the cable. We pick the PoE out. And the second port, which will connect the punch code from the router. And at the rear, we got the AC power slot, which will be connected to our main power. Now, this PoE injector will combine both power and the data and send to the front end PoE switch. Once we turn on the power, we turn on the power. We can see PoE injector is getting the power through all four twist, four twist pair. The power consumption is quite low because we still didn't hand up the camera yet. All right now, let's just connect using the punch code to pick one of the port. Then connect to our camera. We can keep adding the IP cameras until it reaches the maximum power budget, which is 71 watts. There's an interesting question. What will happen while the total power demands more than the PoE injector can supply? No worry, the PoE injector will keep the maximum power output to 95 watts. And the last add-on device probably not function normally. Remember there's chip on both sides which will negotiate the power and make sure it's not overload in the system. Now finally, the camera's live. That's all for the, today. Thanks for hanging out. Don't forget to subscribe us. Any question about this PoE system, please leave us a comment below.